Let's stand together and worship. Invite the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in our midst. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him. Yeah. 
Worship Church, you can have a seat. Hey Amen. I love that song. He maketh me lie down in green pastures and he restoreth my soul. Hallelujah. Do you believe that the Holy Spirit has the room? 
I sure do. Do you feel the Holy Spirit in this place today? Well, if you don't, you're going to. If you would just open up your heart to receive the Spirit, He is here. He is in this place. Jesus said, wherever two or more are gathered in my name, and there's more than two people, that He is here. He's in the room. He's with us. He's with you online this morning. Wherever you are in your living room, traveling, in your car, He is with you, and He is here. Hallelujah. Good morning. My name is Stephen Street. The senior pastor here is Doug Allen, our worship pastor, our worship team, our amazing tech team. We just give God the glory for all the servants in this church that do so much to prepare and bring us in to the house of the Lord. And we are so glad to be here with you. If you're visiting with us today, it's your first time with us. We are thrilled you're here. Please see Miss Lolly at our guest services table as you walk out those doors to the left. She has a first-time gift for you, information about the church. And speaking about information about the church, I believe we have about eight or so people attending Next Steps down in the basement after the service today to learn more about Misty Creek and our story and maybe how to become members of this wonderful faith community. If you'd like to join us and you didn't sign up, don't worry, you can join us. We'll meet right after church downstairs in the basement. We also have a missions team meeting today for those who are on the missions team. Miss Lisa is here. They'll be meeting down in the basement as well in the back room there. And this is appropriate time to dismiss our children. So all the Creek kids, you're going to go with Miss Lisa and Miss Rhonda for Creek kids, which meets down in the basement. And as they're making their way down there, you have an insert in your seat today. If I read through everything that's going on in the life of the church, that will be all we have time to do today, so I'm not going to read through all that, but I do want you to pay special close attention to our Holy Land trip information meetings. There's two of them coming up. I want you to pay special attention to the start of the men's Bible study. It starts tomorrow night, and you don't have to register. You just show up. If you want to eat with us, we're going to eat at 630, but we're going to start promptly at 7 o'clock with our study of the book of the Romans, and it's going to be off the hizzle for shizzle dizzle. I want you to, did I just quote Snoop Dogg? I did. But anyway, it's going to be so good, I don't have any, anything else to say about it, but it is going to be amazing. The women's Bible studies have already started, and I hear that they're going well. And so, ladies, we are so thankful. We've been praying for you and women rooted in Christ and thankful for the leadership uh, of our women's ministry. We are so just grateful what God is doing through the women here in this church. Um, a couple other things. There's a young adult gathering. We're thrilled that our young adult ministry is getting kicked off, and they've got a gathering coming up. Bluegrass and barbecue. And you may say, oh, that's a long time away. It's not. It's October 22nd. October 22nd. We want to pack this place out, the sides, out. Well, not outside because they won't. Well, they might could hear it, but we won't be having it outside. We'll be inside. That is going to be a tremendous day of worship and bluegrass and barbecue on the grounds. I hope you'll join us. Invite some folks to be a part of that. To me, that's one of our most special services of the year, along with Night of Christmas Worship. Um, and that's always on December 23rd. So go ahead and put that on your calendar as well. Marriage retreats, all that's in here. A lot of things happening in the life of the church. I did want to thank those of you who uh, participated yesterday, came by yesterday, donated to our car wash fundraiser um, for three hours of work. Don't you wish you could do this? Our teenagers raised $2,049 yesterday. <laughs> Not bad for three hours of work. Um, we have another one coming up on October 14th, and we'll also have a bake sale that day. So those are the things that are going on in the life of the church. I'm so thankful that you're here. Um, during the message this morning, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about the new room experience that Joy Percival and Karen and myself uh, got to experience, but I'll do that during the sermon so you have that to look forward to. God bless you. About this weather, isn't it glorious? Aren't you thankful for the different seasons, how God reveals himself? And I even thank the Lord, like in the dog days of summer, for air conditioning. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. But no, the, the weather now is just gorgeous. And, and so let's, uh, let me pray now and just thank God for his glorious goodness. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we love you so much. We welcome you here, Lord. And we know that you are always with us. But we just want to tell you, Abba, Daddy, how much we love you. And we just want to say with our mouths, with our lips, that you are always welcome in our midst. So we just want to worship you with our whole hearts this morning. Great are you, Lord, and most worthy of praise. Your greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. Jesus, that's what we do. We pass down our Christian faith 
in our Christian heritage from generation to generation to generation. We speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. We tell the power of your awesome works, and we proclaim your wonderful works. For you are good. You are good, Lord. We celebrate your life-giving, saving grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. As we examine our lives, Lord, there is overwhelming evidence of your goodness. As we look back on every mountaintop and every valley, in every joy and every sorrow and every victory, and yes, in every defeat, you have been with us, Lord. You have led us all the way. Once we were lost, but now we're found. Once we were blind, but now we see. And once we were dead, but now we live. With hearts full of gratitude and joy, we lift up your great name and ascribe to you glory and honor, praise, dominion, and power forever and ever. Yes, let it be so, Lord, always. Amen.
Jesus is good, yes. Yes, amen. Amen, you can have a seat. The scripture today is from Deuteronomy 8, 10 through 14. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud, and you will forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Psalm 146, 2 through 9. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirits depart, They return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sights to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow. But he frustrates the ways of the wicked. This is the word of God for the people of God. This mine here. There we go. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, thank you, Lord God, on this morning of Yom Kippur. We bow our hearts to you, Lord God, in quietness and in awe. Father God, we thank you for the gift of repentance. that we are able to repent because of you. We are able to see our own darkness only because of you. We thank you for that gift, Lord God. And today we remember to lay ourselves down. And we sang that song, I lay me down, I'm not my own. Lord, humble us. It's actually frightening to speak those words, lay me down, I'm not my own. But Lord, you have the outcome in place. You told us we can make our plans, but you plan our outcomes. So, Lord, we repent of thinking that we are responsible for our outcomes. We are not, Lord God. You are responsible for our outcomes. Father, our expectation is in you. Our expectation is not in our performance. It's not in our bank account. It's not in our portfolios. Our expectation has to be in you. Because everything we have 
will be brought to nothing. And we will have only you. So, Lord, today we give ourselves to you and we remember that you alone are the God of gods, the Lord of lords, the light of all lights, and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. church and exalt the name of the Lord. Sanders going to sing and we respond. Good to praise the Lord. Amen. Good singing, church. You can have a seat. Amen. Thank you, worship team, and thank you, Sandra, for being with us. Uh, we're so glad to have Sandra back with us singing this morning that she uh, was with her mother when her mother transitioned to eternity. And uh, what a gift that was for Sandra to be there with her mother, and what a comfort it is to know when our loved ones who know Jesus Christ Make that transition to the promised land. And we can be there and be with them as they do that. I am literally on fire right now. I mean, I, I can't even hold it back. So you thought I, I, I have been for a long time, but I mean, it's been reignited. So um, you know, I'm going to be waking up pretty soon here if you're not already. I'm just humbled today that um, 
My son SJ's with us. Man, I miss him, y'all. I miss him. He's away at college, and he's playing golf, and they won their first tournament, and he's doing great there. But I tell you what, I miss him. I miss him. We did everything together. I, yeah, I, I really do. And it's, it's so, such a joy that he's here, and when he's, he's in South Carolina, and in college, he goes to church with his, with his roommate, and, and I'm just thankful. And they have a Bible study there, and just very, very, very thankful. And uh, I'm thankful for his sister, too. And uh, he says his sister's teaching him to be more like her. And uh, <laughs> and I'm proud of her too. She's she just finished a weekend of leading worship for um for a, for a youth group, and she gets back last night from doing that, and she's doing children's ministry this morning with a couple hundred children, and um, just just God has really blessed um, with us with two amazing children, and I'm very thankful that my wife. Um, was able to go with me um, to, to New Room and a Joy Percival. And if y'all don't know Joy, you need to get to know her. She is the epitome of joy and humility. And it was just a phenomenal time. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I'm just going to tell you, um, it's not a lot different than what we experience here. It's just on a, it's an amazing, grandiose scale when you're with 2,000 plus people that are there for the same reason, to worship Jesus and Jesus shows up, and to be in Texas at New Room, and to be there with several of the people that were present during the, the Asbury Awakening, uh, Revival, whatever you'd like to call it, and hear from some of the students, and hear from the, the actual young man who was delivering j- just a simple message to uh, about a dozen or so students with some very mediocre average musicians playing a little bit of worship music and that morphing into thousands upon thousands of people joining in this awakening, this revival from all over the world coming. And it was just to hear them and hear the testimonies and hear Gen Zers talk about needing spiritual mothers and spiritual fathers that for the last 20 years, the church has pretty much been silent And really hasn't had a place for them because they didn't really know how to minister to that generation. Instead of ministering, they get condemned. I could preach a long time on that. And you're going to hear a sermon about that probably in the next few weeks. But that's not what God had planned for me to preach today. Matter of fact, Joy and Karen know that in the airport on Friday, we had about four hours to kill. And I've already got my sermon done uh, Doug had gotten the notes two weeks before. Sherry got the slides two weeks before. So I'm like, I'm way ahead of schedule. This is great. And I'm in the airport, and the Lord says, pull that sermon out. you got some work to do. <laughs> it's like, man, I just want to sit here in the airport and read my Romans book to get ready for the Bible study. You know, maybe watch a couple of, you know, all the podcasts. I've, you guys send me podcasts. So I'm backed up on podcasts and videos and links and books you want me to read. And I said, maybe I can catch up on some of this. I'll never catch up, by the way. I said, I just want to do that. And the Lord said, nope. And so part of what you're going to get today is an audible, an audible um, from the Holy Spirit that happened in um, the the, uh, Houston airport. So that song, Bless the Lord at All Times, how do we do that? How do we bless the Lord at all times? Do you do that? Do I do that? I'm going to tell you one way that you can begin your day every week, if you're not already doing this, with a powerful wake-up call. Many of you already subscribe to the wake-up call. It's a morning devotion. Some of you don't, but many of you do. And the people that are responsible for the wake-up call are the same people who put on the New Room Experience or conference, as they say. It's an organization called Seedbed. And this will come to your inbox every day. And you can read it, but there's an audio version, which I encourage you to do. It has transformed my walk with the Lord. And my wife and I, this is something that we can do together early in the morning. And we can listen to it as we get ready for our day. If you're not already subscribing, I want you to raise your hand. And uh, I think um, Logan's going to bring you a card. He's going to bring you this card. And all you have to do, if you're not a QR code type person, there's a website on there. You can subscribe to it with, within like a minute, and you're on it. And then you can really experience what many of us are already experiencing through this anointed time with the Lord in the morning. 
And uh, yes, so, and you might have noticed that I'm wearing this band on my arm. This just says, I'm in a band. We almost got Doug a t-shirt that says, I'm in a band, but it's not the band that you think. It's called a discipleship band. It's a very Wesleyan thing. And we have a band that meets in the church. There's a, there's a men's, I think they call it a buddy group, but it's more like a band. It's a group of men that meet on Friday mornings and hold each other accountable, and they have a special time together. And I encourage you, if you're not in a band, which is, it can be anywhere from two to like six people that meets on a regular basis, and the only thing you do in that band is you pray for each other, hold each other accountable, And one of the questions that I ask in the band that I'm a part of is, how is it with your soul? How is it with your soul? And it's a place where you can be vulnerable and transparent, and the Lord will bless your soul at all times, and you'll bless the Lord at all times when you're connected like that. Another way to be involved, I really like the band, and I want to encourage you to do that. I'm going to start talking about that more and more until all of us are in one. And that way it'll be cool. You can go around and say, I'm in a band you know, a discipleship band. But another way of that transparency, that vulnerability is being involved in a Bible study, in a prayer group. We have so many amazing women's Bible studies here. We have a phenomenal men's Bible study that meets on Mondays. We have a power hour of prayer that that's what we do. We pray. One of the greatest spiritual disciplines, and I am, you know, I love reading scripture is prayer. It's our way to connect. So how do we bless the Lord at all times? I want, you to, I want you to hold your hands out this morning. Hold them out. This is your first time here at Mission Creek. You're going to realize this is an interactive service. We're not sleeping. We're not on our phones. We're awake because we've been dead, but we're waking up. Wake up, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will what? Will shine on you. Absolutely. Hold out your hands, and I want you, just you and the Lord, silently together, If you need to close your eyes, do it. You can just hold your hands out and open your eyes as you do it. I want you to thank the Lord for all he's done. And as you're doing that, go ahead and think about if you could only have what you've thanked the Lord for so far today, what would you have? There's some people in here and watching be like, "Uh uh-oh, I didn't thank the Lord for anything today. I just scrambled to get out of the house, and I barely got here anyway. And I'm not sure I can even stay for the whole service. That might be you. But right now, you can make up for that by thanking the Lord. Just thank Him. Whatever comes to mind, family, spouse, children, job, income, whatever it is, roof over your head, the things that you probably take for granted, just start thanking Him. They can be the smallest, minuscule things to the most grand things. Just start thanking Him. Silently, you and Him. Let your gratitude bless his heart. Bless God's heart this morning with your gratitude. Amen. Now I want us to acknowledge... That Jesus has the room. You know how we do that? Hold up your hands again and say, Jesus, you have the room. You have my attention. And you have my heart. Jesus, I belong to you. Jesus, we belong to you. Hallelujah. Doesn't that feel good? Man, you're not your own, are you? You've been bought with a price, a great sacrifice, and now we're offering a sacrifice of praise. That's what this worship team leads us in every week, a sacrifice of praise. We, we worship him. We come into his presence with singing. We make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. We worship him with gladness, for we are his. We are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture, and we enter into those 
courts out there and the gate and the door with thanksgiving and with praise. And we know that he is good and that he's with us and that his steadfast love is with us and that his steadfast love and faithfulness endures forever. And we are recipients of that love and we reciprocate that love to others. How important it is for us to do that. But we only have one responsibility every day, but especially on Sunday mornings. Doug and I have one responsibility. You have one responsibility, and that is, are you ready, to seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You remember it, don't you? If you know it, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia. Alleluia. Now let's sing that same verse again. And this time let's offer our voices. Let's offer ourselves as living sacrifices holy and pleasing to God, and if there's a descant in you, let it fly. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. Well, Stephen, I, I came to hear a sermon today, you know, not be caught up in the expression and experience of the Holy Spirit and be transformed and all that. I just, I just need to hear a word. You're going to hear a word, too. These scripture passages, especially the one from Deuteronomy today, it's talking about deliverance. God wants to deliver you. He delivered the Israelites out of their slavery to the kingdom of darkness, baptized them in the Red Sea, fed them the bread of heaven, the manna, gave them the water of life, and was preparing them for the next phase of the conquest of the promised land. In preparation, he warned them that when they experienced many blessings and the good of the land, to guard their hearts diligently because they would be tempted to become proud and forget the Lord. He wanted them to not forget him. He warned them. He says this, you may say to yourself, my power and strength, the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. That's Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 17 through 18. It's common, folks, for our vision to get blurry. And we're still in the Vision Quest series, part 5. The privilege of the powerless. Very, very common for us to have blurry obstructed vision. This scripture passage, it addresses the drift and even the hijacking of our vision. We forget how desperate and dependent we are, not were, but are for God and his provision and his presence. We forget where God brought us from, why and how. It wasn't our goodness. It wasn't our greatness. It wasn't our worthiness. As Dennis Kinlaw said, in truth, we are a million times worse than we know. You and I desperately need God. From him flows all that is good, true, and right. He is only good. He is only righteous. He is merciful. Many Christians would acknowledge this is true when God brings them out of the slavery of sin into the new, free, abundant, and good life that he has provided by his great love, his power, his goodness. You know, we find ourselves initially when we come to Christ, man, we're on fire, and we experience that incredible encounter with him. 
It's a, an amazing transformational experience. And we have an unwavering focus on God. We sign up for all the Bible studies and retreats and prayer groups because we're ready. Fill me. I, I want it. I, I, I need it. And then we have this, this drift as time goes. We get caught back up in the mundane, mediocre routine of life. And everything else seems to become more important than that amazing manifesting presence that we experienced at our salvation. And we forget real quickly about the goodness, greatness of who God is. Folks, that's very easy to do. All good, all good has its origin in God himself. And it must be maintained in him or else it will become defiled and corrupt we do not have the option to take the good and separate them from his presence. There is no good away from God. There is none. Sin dares to try to take control of our own lives. It wants us to. Culture baits us to do that. You know, the culture has its own truth. The culture has its own preaching. The culture has its own gospel. You understand that, right? And unfortunately, more I could preach for hours on this. I'm not. But unfortunately, a lot of folks are being raised today and taught today the truth preached to and everything else of the world from their little device. And we hand it to them when they're born. Here you go. You know, we do. The iPad, whatever else. Here you go. You know, to appease them. They're always on that thing around the dinner table, you know. What happened to the day when we went outside to play for four or five hours instead of Fortnite for four or five hours? I'm not going to go there today, but I'm just telling you we're going to go there at some point. But you're not just the only ones that need to hear this, folks. A lot of folks need to hear this, but we're going to get there. But I'm going to train you with God's help and equip you on how to minister to all the generations, not just one. We're so focused on we need to minister to the current generation. Man, our own generation needs to be ministered to. You know? Who's the most forgot about generation? Be honest. I work in hospice. I, I work in retirement homes and nursing homes and assisted living locations and independent living places. And I see who the forgotten generation is. And I see the people who never have any visitors, who are just left alone in a corner somewhere or in the hallway somewhere, forgotten about. Like they don't have any value or any worth anymore. Let's focus on the ones that are in good health. But are they really in good health? You know? And so let's get back to this powerlessness that I want to talk to you about today. As we've experienced the goodness of God in our lives, as we've seen godly change in ourselves... And as we've seen fruitfulness, as we seek and chase the ongoing vision for our lives and ministries, has our vision become blurry, obstructed, drifted, or worse? Has it been hijacked? Has the goodness God has worked in us and in our lives become polluted by the enemy into a toxin to our hearts and our heads to cause us to take our eyes off of the greatness and goodness of God and to begin to think it was us who were good, smart, gifted, and impressive? Folks, is the culture not just baiting the current generation, but is the culture baiting you to change or write your own story to something different than what God is writing for you? You know, the story you live in is the story you live out. Man, if I was in this church, I'd be writing this down, man, but... You're probably not, but I would. I'd be putting it in my phone right now. Listen to this. This is truth. The story you live in is the story you live out. What story are you living in? Really? Has your mind been hijacked by the world and culture into something different that leads to a dead end, to a dead road that might lead into you jumping off a cliff someday? Really? Because that's what the world will bait you to do. It will chastise you, confuse you, 
It's chaotic. And God is not a God of confusion or chaos. He's not going to cause you to go jump off something and do something to you that would tarnish his sanctuary, the place where his spirit dwells. You see, all generations, but especially the younger generation, they need spiritual mothers and fathers to pour into them, not judge them, but love them and listen to them and share with them the real story, the blood, guts, and all of it. Because you cannot preach a resurrected Christ without the crucifixion. There has to be a death before there's a resurrection. We have to die to our Selves. And I'm going to tell you, young people want to die to themselves. They just don't know it yet. They want to die to themselves. They've been corrupted and confused, brainwashed, heartwashed by the culture, by the negativity, by the me, myself, and I attitude. And haven't we had enough? On the quiet, we don't, the church, I don't want to offend anybody. So let's have a church where anything goes, whatever you want to believe, your truth is fine. You know, we'll, we'll pick and choose what to teach out of God's Word and make sure we don't use the offensive parts of God's Word. Then you can't even open the book. I mean, really, folks, is the culture baiting you to write your own story? The story you live in is the story you live out. Our lives are shaped by the end we are living for. How many folks out there are in the, uh, living for nothing? For nothing. They don't receive or accept the goodness of God, but it's there. The sacrifice has already been made. It's there. It's our responsibility. It's our vocare. It's our calling to tell them that story. The story of salvation and redemption. So important that no matter what you have done, the goodness of God, His forgiveness, the blood of Jesus will cover it and redeem you and restore you to live a brand new life that has a phenomenal off-the-charts ending, and it doesn't end. It's an eternal destination that we are seeking, that we're living for. Don't believe me? Revelation 21. He is making all things new. There's going to be a time... Where there's no more grief, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more tears, no more suffering, no more disease, no more cancer, clogged arteries, bad backs, bad hips. There's going to be a day. Oh, what a day it will be. And that day is coming. God is on a quest, folks, to make all things new, old things new, restore old things. He's on a quest to restore you, make you new, creating you a clean heart and renew a right spirit within you. He's on a quest, and he will stop at nothing to do it. And he just wants you to surrender, full surrender, not half, all of yourself, everything that you are. I mean, he already owns you. He already created you. His breath is in you. You have his DNA. The blood of Jesus is flowing through your veins, folks. You're more than a conqueror. Do you claim that? Do you receive that? If you believe Jesus has the room, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has the room. Does he have your attention? The bigger question is, does he have your heart? Does he have your heart? All of it. John Wesley says we need a circumcision of the heart. Man, oh man, do we not need that? Does our world not need it? Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will raise you up. He will raise you up. We're going to get there in just a minute. To make all things new. The difference between right and wrong begins and ends with him. Begins and ends with him. If you don't have the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it's impossible to distinguish truth from error. And everything blurs together in a great gray mass of confusion. And I'll say it again. God is not a God of confusion, but clarity and devotion to God. 
prayer, studying his word, the wake-up call, whatever devotions you're doing, the more you lean into him, the more he brings you out of the chaos of the noise and he brings clarity to your life and you begin to hear his voice and no longer the voice of the world. And many times it is a still small voice, but I will declare this, it gets louder and louder. The more you lean into him, you begin to hear his voice over the voice of the world. We need the voice of truth more than ever. Folks, as our good friend J.D. Walt says, there is no middle ground, a place of comfortable Christianity. I like the way things are. I'm good. I'm comfortable. There's a lot of danger in being comfortable and complacent. What if Jesus had been comfortable and complacent? Oh, my word. You see what I'm saying, folks? You ever read any of Victor Hugo? He says this. Listen to the words of Victor Hugo. Have no fear of robbers or murderers. They are external dangers, petty dangers. We should fear ourselves. Prejudices are the real robbers. Vices, the real murderers. The great dangers are within us. Why worry about what threatens our heads or our purses? Let's instead think of what threatens our souls. Things that threaten our soul, things that hijack our brains. You know it. What hijacks our brains? Evil, devil, drugs, alcohol, addictions, pornography, I can keep listing them, folks. There's a lot of them. The scriptures list them out too. Hijacks our brains. Hijacks our souls. How do we get our confidence back? How do we do that? Okay, let's pass out our little handout, ushers. You're getting a handout. You get to take this home. You're getting something to help you to apply this message today. I believe many of you will look at this many, many times over the next several months because we're going to look briefly, but we're going to look at Psalm 146 and we're going to get our confidence back, our holy confidence, not our arrogance, our holy confidence that leads to humility. And humility is not a weakness. It's one of the greatest strengths. Jesus was humble and he's never considered as being weak. He took on the weight of the world's sin, folks. And the horrible, terrible, painful death of crucifixion. There is nothing weak about that. He is the suffering servant, the wounded healer. He is the Messiah who is the servant of all. The privilege of the powerless. Everybody got that now? Pretty close to getting it. It's up there too for those that are watching online. We made that print extra small for just for you. Hope you enjoy that. So we're going to look at Psalm 146, verses 2 through 6. This is the New Living Translation. I don't usually quote from that, but this is what we're going to use today. So it says this. Let's read it together. You got it? Okay. Don't put your confidence in powerful people. There is no help for you there. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth, and all their plans die with them. But joyful are those who have the God of Israel as their helper whose hope is in the Lord their God. He made heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He keeps every promise forever. Okay, so we're looking at the need, we're looking at God's promise, and we're looking at Psalm 146, just verses 7 through 9 for now. So it says, the need. I've been wronged, I've been taken advantage of. Anybody in here been wronged, taken advantage of ever in your life? I would, I would have expected to see more hands than that. You're just, you're just embarrassed, aren't you? I got both my hands up. There they are. Okay? Anybody in here ever had an assassination of your character? Both my hands are up. Falsehoods, misrepresentation, a lot of us, right? Well, look at God's promise. Justice made whole. He gives justice to the oppressed. How about that? The next one, I can't provide for myself or my family. You ever been there? Do not be ashamed of this. There are people in this room that are watching that are paycheck to paycheck. And if you took their monthly income just one month away from them, they would have a very, very hard time surviving. 
I'm serious, folks. I've counseled a lot of people over the years, and you'd be surprised. It says this, provision. Provision. It's okay to pray for his provision. But before you pray for his provision, pray for his presence. His presence first, and then his provision. And then, he says, and food for the hungry. He gives justice to the oppressed and food to the hungry. I feel held captive by my situation. Do you? Are you in, boy, this is touching a lot of people. Are you in a dead-end marriage? A dead-end relationship? Seriously, you got a wayward child. Are you going through something and you're pretty desperate and you feel held captive? I mean, it's a dead end job. Man, I'm so tired of this job. I feel held captive. Is somebody holding you captive? You got somebody holding you back, telling you you're not good enough, speaking death over you? The Lord opens, no, freedom. The Lord frees the prisoners. He can free you. He can put someone in your life to speak reason and truth into you. A counselor, a pastor, a band, a women's study, a men's group that can uplift you and help you through that situation. Peer counseling is a beautiful thing, folks. How about the next one? I'm lost. I'm unclear about what to do. I'm just constantly going through life like this. It's just a constant. Just feel that way. Can't sleep at night. Thoughts in my mind. Want to sleep. Taking all this stuff and I still can't sleep. I'm lost. I'm unclear about what to do. Clear vision. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. I'm heavily burdened, have been humbled, Running low on hope. The Lord provides inspiration. The Lord lifts up those who are weighed down. He can do that. He can take that weight off of you and set you free. You can cast your cares upon him. And he will raise you up. You remain contrite and true in your prayer life. Don't give up on him because he doesn't give up on you. I know God loves me, but I don't see him near You're here this morning. He's all around you. And you are seen here, folks. You are seen. You are seen who are watching online. You are seen. You are seen. More than that, you are loved. Everybody in here is loved with the love of the Lord. Quit looking at your watches. The Lord loves the godly, the righteous, the upright. But he also loves those who are in a hole, in a miry pit, and struggling. And he wants to bring you out of that. I'm walking in faith through uncharted territory. God's promise, safely kept. The Lord protects the foreigners among us. He protects you. I feel alone. I feel abandoned. He cares for you. He holds you close. That's his promise. He cares for the orphans and the widows. This person, this group, this organization is working against the people and purposes of God. And so you get on social media and you crucify them with your published thoughts. God's promise, bring to ruin. Let him do it. Let him do it. And he frustrates the plans of the wicked. You don't think he knows about the agenda of the culture in the world? He does. And he will work through you sometimes, but many times he doesn't need your help at all. Sometimes... Less is more. Silence is golden. Just lift your hands and pray. That's the best antidote. I love that psalm. I really do. I love it. Have you ever felt you had the the poverty of the Spirit? I mean, really. Jesus references this in the Sermon on the Mount. I don't have time to go there today, but he does. This psalm that you just went through leads us into the lane of God's presence, especially when we feel powerless. I can't think of a better way to illustrate this than to show you a little clip of a bald eagle. Now, when you think of a bald eagle, Doug saw one not long ago from his, from his own, like your own yard, wasn't it? Yeah, walking on peeler, just, just out of the blue. 
A bald eagle. That's a big deal, folks. When I see, when I, I'm almost like singing, you know, I, I mean, I, it's like, that's majestic. And so I think of, of the scripture from Isaiah and soaring on eagle's wings. But what happens when the majestic national bald eagle becomes powerless? Look and see. touches my heart every time. I've seen it like 20 times. That's what God does for the powerless. He releases you to be who he created you to be, to fill you with his presence, to give you his peace, to give you his power. You have no goodness. You have no power. You can make no difference without him. But with him, you can soar. You can make a difference. Each one of us can reach one for the cause of Christ. If you want the kingdom, it starts with undevoted devotion, unhindered devotion to the king. You want that kingdom. Pete Hughes was one of the speakers at our conference. He's at a very large church in London. He's on fire. He's on fire. He said that. If you want the kingdom, it starts with unhindered devotion to the king. The eve of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Can't think of a better way for us to identify with our powerlessness, to surrender that, and to be filled with His power, with His redemption, with His grace. So I want us to pray. Would you bow your heads? Silent, you don't repeat this out loud. This is you and God. Like, I'm not even here. I'm just guiding you through this. This is you and God. Lord Jesus, I confess my sin. And you fill in the blank. Whatever it is that separates you from the Lord right now, from reaching your full potential in Christ, Lord Jesus, I confess this bad thing. This thing that's hijacked my mind, I confess. Fill in that blank. Folks, the place of confession becomes the place of deliverance. You can be delivered right now. Jesus has the room. He will take it from you. Let him atone. Let him forgive. Let him cover you. I want you to say this. If you if you are convicted to say it after I say it, I want you to say it just silently to the Lord. I cancel permission for the enemy to be at work. I cancel permission for the enemy to be at work in me. I cancel permission for the enemy to be at work in this church. I cancel permission for the enemy to be at work in this country. I cancel permission for the enemy to be at work in this world. In Jesus' name, I cancel permission for the enemy to have any strongholds 
In Jesus' name, I command all darkness to be gone. All of it. All darkness to be gone. Lord, I need you. Lord, we need you. Come feel all the empty spaces. Right now, Lord, we beseech thee. We call on the name of the Lord Jesus. And we surrender to the authority and sovereignty of the Holy Spirit. Set us free, Yahweh, our deliverer, our rescuer. May your kingdom come. May your will be done. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And all God's children said fervently, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Stephen. So bless the Lord at all times. How do we do that? Stephen asked us that. How do we do that? You know who I was thinking of when he said that? Bless the Lord at all times. His grandmother, Alan, who he said, she never ends her prayers with amen. Instead, she talks to the Lord all day long. And what she has figured out and what we need to figure out is that, Lord, we need you. We need the Lord every hour. Do we need the Lord every hour, Misty Creek? If you believe that, let's stand together and tell him that we have an opportunity to tell you, Yeshua, that we need you every hour of every day. Lord God, we want to be in fellowship with you, and we give our hearts to you this morning, Lord. Yes, let's sing to him. Lord, I come, I confess.
Jesus, and we trust you. Claim this benediction it's from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. He does not grow tired or weary. His understanding no one can fathom. Even youth will get tired. Even young people will get weary. But not God. He gives power to the powerless. For those who hope in the Lord or wait on the Lord, I like hope. Those who hope, those who wait on the Lord... He shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up. That image, mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall soar. They shall run and not grow weary, and they shall walk and not grow faint. No matter how you walk, you won't grow faint. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore, amen. Go in peace, brothers and sisters.